Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another edition of Smoky Prince. My name's Smokey McGee. You can call me Jason. Either one works just fine. Today, we are going to go over my personal print settings on how I go about printing in carbon fiber nylon. We're actually going to go ahead and do a full print from start to finish, and I haven't decided which one. I think we're going to go ahead and use the Matter Hackers Nylon X for this. I actually use the same settings for all of my carbon fiber nylons, whether it's PHAT, the Nylon X, or the PA12 from uh, Polymaker. I, I kind of have a universal, this is what I do. It works for me, I can't guarantee it'll always work for everybody as everybody has different situations. In the Northwest, I tend to deal with a pretty decent climate. My office is really easy to deal with as far as humidity goes, so I don't have a lot of that issues going on. That also being said, do as I do, or do as I say, not as I do. I keep all of my filaments up behind me. Realistically, you should be keeping them in a dry box. They won't go bad that fast if you do. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and just jump right into the first step. We're gonna go ahead and dry a filament. Um, and like I said, we're gonna go ahead and use the Matter Hackers Nylon X for our print. So let's go ahead and jump into the drying process, shall we? So one of the cool features about the Bamboo Series X1 is actually has its own drying series in the menu itself. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the little things. In Utilities, there is a dry filament. We're gonna click on that, we're gonna prepare. It says PACF, PACF. There's a whole bunch of different versions of stuff that we can go in here. Um, and actually, we're gonna go ahead and do the PAHTCF because, well, it's as close to properties as the Nylon X as I can figure out as of right now. Um, so, sorry, let me block out the sun right there really quick for you. Right there, it's gonna go ahead and prep the printer. We're gonna go ahead and open this up. I'll show you what it's doing. It's actually just preparing it. It's gonna be heating the bed as well as getting a timer set in the inner chamber. And just like that, preparation complete, I can legitimately just press confirm and start. So what's gonna go ahead and happen here? It's gonna heat the bed, heat the chamber, like we said, and that's all it's really going to be doing. So what we wanna do next is go ahead and get our filament in here to start drying. Now you do wanna cover it. So what I like to do, I take my filament put it directly on the print bed. And then I actually get, oh goodness, a kitchen pot just to cover it. That, like, it's difficult to do one-handed. One second, there we go. Just like that. And then it's covered, it's good to go. It's heating in the chamber and I let it sit for the next 12 hours. So we're gonna go ahead and come back in 12 hours and then we'll go ahead and start our print. So first and foremost, we are gonna go ahead and wanna load in a file. Um, we wanna go ahead and load it in. We'll do this. I'm gonna be doing this one for a friend. It's a replacement uh, inside the waist clip for his holster. Um, and carbon fiber nylon should be perfect for this project. So now that we got it set, this is the orientation that I wanted in. That part's the easy part. This is our front, this is our back. We're gonna go ahead and look over to this side of the screen with all of the details, and we're gonna go ahead and change things as followed. So, when we go to supports, this is a big one for me. We're going to enable supports. I like to be able to let my supports come off. We're gonna go ahead and go with slim. We're gonna angle it down to 20. We're going to, on the build plate, I don't like ports that crawl in between my things. Um, we're going to take off, remove small overhangs. We're gonna keep everything as is right here. We're going to change the distance to two. We are going to leave tr so, uh, tree support branch diameter to two. We're going to change tree support branch angle to 30. We're gonna bring the loops 
up to one. We're going to go ahead and change our tree support brim width to three. We're going to make each one of these, we're going to add an extra two to this. Don't ask why, I just do. Default. Base pattern spacing. 2.5 is fine. Pattern angle, zero. Top interface layers at two. Bottom interface layers at two. Default, point two for top interface spacing. Little gaps, little gaps. And then for support object X, Y distance, we're actually gonna bump this up to 0.6. And then we're gonna keep this at 10. That's what I do for my supports for the carbon fiber nylons for easy removal. Now this can change if you're actually using the support setup for the carbon fiber nylons and you want to risk ruining your AMS with the carbon fiber nylons. I say that because carbon fiber nylon tends to be very abrasive and really shouldn't be put through those AMS systems unless you want to be replacing things often. Um, as far as overall quality, you don't need to change a lot in here. You can actually Bamboo has this great thing where you can actually just click the type of filament that you're printing in. Bamboo, PLA, CF, uh, generic PLAs. If you use their setting for the Bamboo PAHT, it is perfect. Um, as far as what I'm looking for in actual printing itself. For strength, we're going to go ahead and change our wall loops to four, depending on what you're printing in. Four is normally sufficient unless you need something super strong. And then wall can actually be a little bit stronger than infill. Just noting that. Um, as far as the other settings go, everything else is pretty basic. I will change my infill density on this to 75. Because I already have four wall loops, a little bit of infill is going to go a long way with this specific type. A little bend will be nice. Um, other than that, that's really all we need to change. And I'm not even going to touch speed and I'll tell you why. I will go ahead and leave all of the base settings in bamboo as is. And then when we actually press print, I'm going to turn this to silent mode and it'll basically cut my print time in quote unquote half. Um, it's actually a little bit faster than half, but it does slow it down substantially, which gives me a lot better print. So we're going to go ahead and load this straight over to the printer. We're not going to press send yet because last we checked, our filament was still drying. So we'll go ahead and get to the next step and go from there. The printer does say confirm drying. It is completed. We're going to go ahead and take our cooking pot out. This is just a cover. You can actually print yourself a cover to do this. I just haven't done it yet. Um, and take my filament out. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you what I set up so I can print my carbon fiber nylons a bit easier on this specific printer. Go ahead and come on in. So I went ahead and printed a filament splitter. So this tube right here runs directly into the AMS system up top. And right here is a little hole for another set of filament to run directly into the printer as well. Because the tube stops right here, you can basically, as soon as the AMS is done, the filament gets pulled out to here anyway. So you can actually just feed any other filament through the side, whether it be through the spool on the back or have I, how I have it set up right here, which was a really simple, um, this bolted into the side and through the, through the other side using the spool holder itself. Plus, I liked this design a lot because it can actually fit my poop chute on the side as well. Just convenience factor. On this model of dryer, I did end up poking a hole through the side just that way I could feed it directly into the, the hose uh, directly. Um, but we're going to go ahead and throw our filament in there. We're going to get this turned on. We'll turn it on to max settings uh, for the max amount of time because 
once I'm starting my print, I'm actually going to work and I'd like to keep it as dry as possible for as long as I can, for whatever reason, uh, that makes sense to me. All right, now that my dryer is set, the filament is pushed into the side and is essentially in the printer. Just a few things that I wanted to go ahead and touch on. I am going to be using not the basic uh, bed plate for the bamboo. Instead, we will go ahead and be using the engineering plate from bamboo instead. So we'll throw that into the printer itself, make sure everything is lined up as it should be, just like so. I love the magnetic bed on these. It's just super, super convenient. Go ahead and close it up. And the printer, as far as we're concerned, is good to go. So let's go back to the computer. We'll press send and we'll watch it get, a, get it start on. We are also going to go ahead and change this to the X1 Carbon with an engineering plate because that's the printer that we're using. Again, not a big deal, but it is important to make sure that it is sending the right stuff to the right printer. So, no AMS, perfect, dynamic flow, done, and sent. All right, from here, we're basically just watching the printer do its thing. We'll go ahead and start off. I'll show you how it does start and where it does end. And something I did forget to do, really quickly, before it does start, something I did forget to do was throw some glue stick on my bed. Glue stick is going to be fantastic for these types of prints, specifically, not necessarily for bed adhesion, but for bed release. What you'll find is that the bamboo plates are incredibly good at adhesion, but the release on them, uh, it's almost like you're welding to the bed plate itself. So glue stick is great to actually remove your prints. And this one just kind of came with the printer, so we'll be using this. I mean, I think I could have screwed this up. So there's a thing you want to make sure that you're doing when you're printing in carbon fiber nylon. Go ahead and pop it off the board. Came off real easy. The supports, depending on how big your print is, they can actually, and I might run into this issue, weld themselves essentially to the print itself. Um, you want to realistically be able to remove supports about, it's like six to eight hours after you're done with the print at like a max. If you can do it quicker, much easier to remove supports. <laughs> you have it that is how i go about printing in carbon fiber nylon it turned out fantastic i still have to trim up a little bit on the sides here where it was sitting on its side um, but all the supports actually popped out like i said clean your supports out quickly they they can weld to the print itself um, we got lucky this time didn't have to worry about it um, and overall we got a great print now just a couple of things i wanted to go over you don't need a super high-end printer to do this. I do it on my uh, bamboos because I have them. I did my first couple of carbon fiber nylon prints on my Ender 3 V2. Superheated the settings, max it out at, uh, I think at the time it was like 260 degrees Celsius, um, and then just kind of slowed down the print. Uh, as long as you're tuned, you got to uh, make a little makeshift hotbox you don't have to spend the thousand dollars on an x1 and you can do carbon fiber on a 200 dollars printer 
But these are the settings that I've been using. If you're curious, I hope this helped. Um, if you did enjoy the video, do me a favor, hit the sub, hit the like, hook a brother up. We are building the channel. Um, and if I was helpful, cool. Um, if not, maybe I'll see you in the next video. But on that note, you have a wonderful night and I will see you later. Deuces.